What's up, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Hashtag BK Talks Too Much. And on this episode, my beautiful sister and my beautiful cousin, we are discussing parenting your parents. So go ahead and introduce yourselves like you don't already know who you are. Anybody? I guess I'll go. Hey guys, I'm sister, um, Jam for short. That's all y'all need to know. So hey. Greetings and salutations. I'm also <laughs> cousin Brielle, aka Breezy. And that, these are the last couple people in the world who still call me by my nickname. Hey. <laughs> I'm trying to record here. That's the man. <laughs> <laughs> How you plan on being big one day? You you looking at what the distraction is? You you failed already. You lost your job. There's, this is, this that's is, why there's editing. That's why you're supposed. Oh to. Jesus. Anyway, sorry about that <laughs> distraction. <laughs> so, um, we must <laughs> talk the other day um, about parenting your parents, and I've also had this conversation with Brielle as well. And um, it occurred to me that as children, it doesn't matter how old we get, we're still seeking the approval of our parents that unfortunately is something that we never, we never will obtain their level of success in their eyes, I think I want to say. I'm not sure if that's, if that's, if that's politically correct. Um, what do you guys think? I'll go first. I'll go, I'll let her, I'll let Jam breathe. <laughs> um, honestly, as one who was constantly seeking the approval of her mother, and it finally just sunk into my head, probably around about 33. No, 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 I'm lying. 31. That was the last year. of my life <laughs> for me. I would love for the love for her to be my cheerleader in all aspects, but she's not. She comes from a different era. Um, and you just have to wrap your mind around that. Sometimes they put their dreams that have been unfulfilled in you mm-hmm. expect you to carry that to the finish line. And it's an interesting conversation. But it's also, again, I have to live for me. I have my own existence my own identity. I tell my mother all the time, although I am Terry's child, I am not a child. And that's where the balance has to come in. Mm-hmm. You can't tell me what to do. Like, I can respectfully do, because I do honor and respect, but at the very end of the day, because I'm going to quote what all our mothers have said, mm-hmm. some, in some form or fashion, uh, when you get out of my house and off my dime, you can do what you want. Well, guess what had happened? <laughs> you still want us to do what you want. <laughs> I just, just thought I'd put that out there because you know what, Terry? Uh, I've been out of her house officially. This time, we had four years solid. And before then, I went back to help after Nana passed. And before then, it was like, it was a while. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it's uh, approval for me. It's more so acceptance because I'm not going to get the approval. I just need you to accept the way that I'm living and be okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like me personally, a parent's job is to help guide the independent person that we are. Um, but they get that confused with become, like Breezy said, with becoming the person that they want us to be. And when we say to them, Nah, fam. <laughs> They're like, oh, so you're being disrespectful now. Ooh. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I just said I want to do what I want to do. Where, where, where did, how did we get there to disrespect? I don't, I don't, I don't understand that. And I was listening to a podcast the other day, and the girl on the podcast said emotional manipulation. And I was like, hmm, hmm. emotional manipulation. That sounds about mm-hmm. right. <laughs> well, what do you feel about that, Jamila? <laughs> Damn. 
<laughs> um, you know me. Y'all know me. I'm a cry baby. Okay. I cry over anything. So that's the easiest way to get me is with that <laughs> emotional manipulation. Like, I didn't raise you this way. And I didn't expect that. And what would the family say? And what would your father say? And you know right from wrong. And you want to be like society. That's the, that's the favorite line. Society. <laughs> Society's the good one. So it's just, I don't know. I think sometimes our parents have a hard time adapting with society. Probably the same way their parents had a hard time as well. Mm -hmm. Um, But I just think as parents, they have to understand that as we go through life, we will no longer need them for certain uh, milestones. Like, (laughs) I don't need your approval to get my ear pierced. 27 years old, the waiver says 18 or older. (laughs) <laughs> now if i need questions on like you know an OBGYN or like becoming a wife or like dealing with my boss at work you know these are milestones that i feel like my parents can help me in but i think they just feel like they're supposed to be included in everything but it's like nah bruh because you really wouldn't like who I am if I included you in everything. You wouldn't like this daughter. You well, wouldn't like me. Since you touched on the word inclusion, um, how much inclusion do you guys feel? Because I know our mother often says, I want to be included in your life. But then she says, don't include me in your life. So how much inclusion is too much inclusion, if not enough inclusion, to include Parentals. No, we about to get in trouble. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll take this. So my my mother and I just got close. We got closer after um, the past, and she doesn't like. I don't have a like a problem. I live my life. Okay, like I believe I'm an open book to a degree. So let's put this out there. So. I had started doing readings, spiritual readings or whatever, which business is great. My mother called me and you would have thought I was, I had started the OnlyFans and she found out because she called me and she's like, <sighs> all this theatrical, it was all this pageantry. I, readings, Brielle, that you were raised in a church. It's like, come on, sis, you know what I can do. Don't do this. Like, don't do this. And so like, I, I allow her to let, be my friend on Facebook because my mother is funny on social media. However, when she tries to reprimand on social media, I just be like, come on now, girl. Miss girl, don't do us. Don't do the kids. Like, <laughs> I'd be so annoyed. And then she'll call me and she's like, whatever, it's your life. I'm not in it. Okay, pick a side, sis. Cause you, and then there's always some shade after it. Well, you've always were different. You've always been the aardvark. You're my special child. You're the flower child. That's that's who I am, the flower child. I'm the root you've, child. Always been, you've always been ornery. Like, I'm always some type of shady big word. I'm like, <laughs> so, you know, I'm happy my mother's involved in my life because I, I did crave that level of bond with my mother. But at the same time, mm-hmm. Harry and I can't go up the block. Like, put it this way, I'm going home for the first time since September of 2019. I will be there all five days. One will rise, one will fall. It ain't gonna be me, cause I ain't got time. What do you have? Oh, jam. It's your turn. My thoughts on what? <laughs> Inclusion, girl. You, you are my honest answer, sister. How much inclusion do you think is too much inclusion, or should should your parents? understand especially our mothers at a certain age that list girl there's stuff we're going to include you in but it's you can't be included in everything here's my thing i don't have a problem including my parents in my life as if you want my honest answer Mm -hmm. if you're not prepared for my reality don't ask me because i'm not going to change it like it's 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 i can understand like if I was like 16 out here doing what I'm doing now at 27, I'm not. I can understand at 18, even 21. But according to science, my brain is now fully developed. And according to Enterprise, I can rent a car without an underage fee. 
According to the United States government, I can buy cigarettes and go to war and vote. And in some states at the age of 16 or 17, I can get birth control or have abortion, okay? So I just feel like at 27, if you're not ready to accept my truths and my realities as the wonderful young lady that you raised me to be, mm-hmm. don't ask me. Because then I don't have to tell you and then you can't be disappointed in me because you don't know. Let's, let's briefly switch gears for a moment. Career choices. Um, I know all of our parents, we're all college educated. Um, we come from parents that are, she said kind of, sort of, that are college educated, at least one of our parents. But I know for me, growing up, I've always said, oh, yeah, I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a lawyer. And I think I used to say it because it sounded good. I think a really teeny tiny part of me wanted to be a lawyer. But as I got older, I started to realize that I don't want to be tied down into a specific type of career because my brain doesn't function that way. Um, and I know with parents, they have this idea of, okay, well, you're going to go to school, you're going to be educated and you need to be a doctor. You need to be a lawyer. You need to be this, you need to be that. And then once you don't kind of go through that career path, they get, like Jamila said, disappointed. Um, so what do you guys think, why do you guys think it's hard for your parents to allow you to walk in your earth's purpose? versus walking in their purpose. Oh, I got you. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna pick up that, that alley-oop. <laughs> because let's just call a state a state. We are, we are black, Afro-Latina, Caribbean background children, okay? And that was the status. Go ahead. Go ahead. What'd you say? Parents that grew up in the projects. Right. <laughs> um, that was the creme to the creme. Like you, you go to school, you become a doctor, a lawyer, and that's very hard to break because we are only maybe one generation removed from mm-hmm. segregation and all that stuff. So, you know, our parents, especially mine, cause I believe my parents are a little bit older than yours. Um, yeah. from civil rights and being called colored. So you go to school, you go to education, you, you pull yourself up and you, you bake something cause of respectability politics. Cause at the end of the day, my mother wanted me to go to school. And I think I went to, wanted to go to school because that was what was expected. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. had I followed what I wanted to do, it wouldn't have been college. It was cool, you know, I had a, I had a great time. Cause I took, again, a scenic route through college because nobody was getting that. Maybe she shouldn't be here. Yeah. I'm, not that I'm not smart. It just wasn't my jam. See, I incorporated. Okay, see what I did. And um, it, it's really hard to tell somebody who's been ingrained because by the time was when I went to college, what was let's see the first time? Mommy was in her fifties, I think. So she's not gonna. Oh, okay. You want to do that? You just want to follow your dreams? That's wonderful. Do you have something to fall back on? Like, I don't want to hear that BS. Mm-hmm. They want you to have security and they also have, and it's not their fault. It's not the shade my mother for wanting me to be all these the upper echelons, but she doesn't realize that it's about a life that makes you happy. Right. Mm-hmm. I went to school for communication studies. I was going to be the next Wendy Williams until I decided I don't want to sell my soul for that. Mm-hmm. I love doing poetry. I like performing. I love being able to pour in people. I didn't get a certification to be a life coach, <laughs> you know, and it's hard. I think she's finally just realized she's going to do what she wants. Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't think it's fair that that's thrust upon us, especially black people, mainly black women. And if you have that Caribbean or that, that like that extra oomph of level of what is, Oh, you're going to be a doctor. That yeah, old school. Okay. Mindset. You don't have options. Like, there's this one of my favorite movies called The Ditch Digger's Daughter. And I love the movie because I can relate to it. He had all these daughters. Mm-hmm. And they're all going to be doctors. He was so strict. And there was this one. This is one that she wanted to be a psychiatrist. And he was just so, he's like, he, he tried to fight me the whole way. But he was like, I'm still a doctor that I just did it my way. And I related so much because I was like, 
that to me is not that I'm trying to go against because she just thinks that you just want to do what, what she wants. It's like, no, I literally, I dance to the beat of my own drum. To know me is to know I'm not like anybody else. I, I call myself an experience. For some, it's a great experience. For others, it's a whoo. <laughs> but I, I, don't, I don't blame parents for wanting us to be, you know, there. But I, I do hold them accountable for not listening at a certain point. Like, there has to be a point where we're like, okay, maybe <laughs> this isn't what she wants. And trust her, you know, because I know they, they try to shield us from certain experiences, but those experiences make us who we are. Like, I know my level of strength because when I decided to go to South Carolina, yeah. everybody was like, what the hell are you doing? I went to Georgia. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> they weren't the happiest about that, I, I recall. Because guess who they were trying to send down there to collect you? <laughs> and I was like, I'm not going to get that grown-ass girl. Like, she grown. What you talking about? <laughs> and, but, it's, but it's that. It's like, you know, our, our mothers are interesting because they, they jabber jaw and jabber jack about us. Like, we don't know. And it's like, as the older cousin, I'm like, no, my cousins are great. I know y'all have been through things, but my cousins have figured it out. Trying figuring it out. Mm-hmm. When, when y'all was in the 70s wilding, because, you know, we got the tea from my grandmamas. I know the tea, Terry. Right. Yeah, it, all hydrate. Maybe the first one to say, I used to do that back in my day, and y'all I ain't had no kids. <laughs> okay, that be the line. <laughs> um, why do you guys feel like it's hard for parents to apologize? Um, I think, I think it's a, it's a two way street, you know, as, as children, we look at our parents as superheroes <clears throat> and when we transition into adult children, we start to look at them as human. So it's just like for the past <laughs> couple of decades, you didn't have to apologize because even though Superman may have damaged a million dollars worth of property. He's still who's who's a villain of Superman? The Penguin? No, that's Batman. I don't know. He still defeated the villain. You feel me? So it's just like I think as a children, I mean adult children, we never really require them to apologize because we're not in the position to. Um, so now when we come of age and we're in the position to say, "Hey now, mother. Hey now, father. That was not very nice." Mm-hmm. Um, this is how you made me feel. It's mm-hmm. like, no, I am the parent. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. what I say goes. It's been working for this way. Like, you didn't turn out that bad, so why are you bringing it up now? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think also we just have to give them sometimes that grace of realizing that they're going to make mistakes. We're going to hope that they're accountable, but if they're not, <laughs> Darn. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Go ahead. No, okay. <clears throat> it's that whole old school way. I brought you in this world. I'll take you out. I gave you life. And I had to sit down one day and I said, again, my favorite quote I am your child, but I'm not a child. Right. And you know, it would speak to me like that. Like, and I still have feelings. Like, I'll be completely transparent. Y'all know me. I'm tough. I, I'm, I'm big bossiana. I'm not scared of nobody. Terry's the only person that can break me down too much. I be, I be crying worse than Viola Davis when she says that. I be out of it. But and, and, she, and my mom does not apologize, and I had to accept that. My mm-hmm. mom's form of apology is she'll stop talking to me again, or oh, I saw something for you. What's your address? Like yeah, she. <laughs> She randomly sent me my favorite cookie. Um, y'all might have saw it on my IG story. And I was like, that makes me, like, I get my mom's language of love. Because mm-hmm. nobody apologized to her. So she doesn't feel like, especially because I'm still, because she's still telling me to stay in the child's place. And I'm just looking at the phone like. See, that's when you got to hit them with that scripture back. When they say, honor thy mother and thy father. Then you got to hit them with, well, the Bible also says. Come on, sister. Provoke your children. Oh! It wants you Ephesians uh, chapter six verse four to be exact. It says, "Okay, it's a two way street, all right." <laughs> yeah, like. It, but it, then it, you say that that's rude. So, <laughs> yeah. 
but it's the truth. And okay, I gotta tread lightly because you never know. Somebody might see this and get offended, but I feel like always offended. Out of the brood that is my siblings, I think I'm the one I figured it out. Like I am completely removed from I, I need my parents. They they're a clutch, but I'm I'm all right. You know, I got my little tribe or whatever when I need help. So I've realized the apologies I seek, I give myself. Cause at the end of the day, it's sometimes you just be looking at the phone like, ain't no point. I'm just gonna put you on mute. I'm gonna let you have it. Go off, girl. Okay, girl. <laughs> Work, mother. Uh huh. Okay. And then take her off mute. I hear you. All right. Well, I'm gonna go ahead. I'll talk to you later. I could do that. I'm too hard headed. I'm gonna argue my point. Like, no, you wrong. No, I'm gonna tell you why you wrong on this. Yeah. And I well, think see, that's where I fall short. <laughs> no, no, I don't think that's falling short. I want, because I know my mama. Like, my mama pull out the daggers on you. And the way I'm set up now at 34, almost 35, oh, I can turn the broken routine too. What's up, sis? But I don't want to do that. Because me and my mother, as much as we get on each other's nerves, I figured it out. We're a lot alike. It's like, I'm just arguing with the older version of myself. <laughs> to know me is to know neither one of us are going to win. Yeah. Because who's going to shut up? Not me. Okay. Like, we've literally been on the video looking like the two people. <laughs> Like, when we were on the Mother's Day video call, and sis was unbothered, to sit, I said, well, we don't have to be on here. I can be doing something else for my day. I hate that face. That face pisses me off. But she... That's why, and when I sent that meme that she looked like the old lady from the um, PJs, and she started, that's exactly who she looked like. Look at this. <laughs> Jamila, did you see it on my stories? I'll send it to you. I, got, I still got screenshots. I said, this is my mother. Just looking, I'm, and she, she hollered. She said, I'm going to get you back. That's fine, because that's who you look like. Mean and surly. Okay, Kingdom Come. <laughs> I mean, me personally, honestly, I'm trying to get to a point where I don't need the apology, but it pisses me off, because if I say something to you, and then you take my words and touch them to the sun, to the sun and make something in your head that I didn't say, I feel like I'm owed an apology. If you do something to me and I bring it to your attention that it was inappropriate and it was disrespectful on my part, I feel like I'm owed an apology. I understand that you're my parent. You're always going to be my parent. But at the end of the day, as all of us have said thus far, I am still an adult. I'm not your equal adult. I am an adult. And I feel as though, listen, you could be like, I'm sorry, my bad. Don't be like, you know, I still love you. Not an apology. I know you love me. You have to. You're my parent. You know what's amazing? <laughs> what, what really gets me? I have a need. I, in this current climate with everything that's going on, um, I want to be home. I want to see my parents. I want to be up under them. Now, uh, <laughs> how long will be up under them? Another conversation, right? I um, I'm just appreciate because it's like it's becoming realer to me. I'm like, you know, mommy just turned sixty five, daddy's about to be sixty three. I'm just like, dang, how you know? I want my time in. I think they see me as an adult, mm -hmm. and even if they don't. It's okay, cause maybe they want to like, cause I'm me getting older is a reminder to them of their, you know, of their getting older. I mean, so maybe I, I, I might be reaching. I feel this is the reach, but maybe the reason why we're viewed still as children is because they're trying. That's when we. That's when they really did have full, you know, over us. They had full autonomy over who we were, and you know. Y'all were going to be track stars and you were going to be in a WNBA. And you know what I mean? Like, and so I give them that much grace. Because mm -hmm. they're grown as hell. And My dad, the job. Oh, that's okay. I never, I never really looked at it that way. I just always looked at it like, you're my parent. Listen, I'm going to need you until the last breath. Good, bad, or indifferent. But I guess that makes sense that the older they get, it's more as a realization that 
shit, I'm getting old. They getting old. Time is a wasted. And also, like, we got to ask why sometimes. Like, I know I asked one of my parents, well, why is it so important for you or important to you for me to accomplish this particular goal? Like, mm-hmm. why? Because this is how I feel when I hear it. I feel overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. I, I get anxiety thinking about it. And when I asked the why, I think it made more sense. And it also gave me a... um a sense of security like oh i can do it and maybe i can still take the other things that i'm interested in and accomplish that goal just do it a different way yeah so i think also as as adult children i'll say as adult children we also have to take ownership and ask well why why do you feel that way i think there is a difference or a correlation between empty nest syndrome and parental control. Why you make that face? <laughs> Actually, no, because my parents don't have an empty nest, and they probably never will. <sighs> empty nest and control. Mm-hmm. I don't want. I don't. I don't. I don't know why I feel weird about that word control. What I mean is, like, I feel like influence. Maybe, maybe influence. Okay, we can use influence. What I'm what I mean by when I say that is that of course we're older and particularly both for Jamil and I's parents, they're in separate households. So mentally they are going through something whether or not they want to admit it. They don't have someone to nag at, someone to yell at, someone to just fuss at, just to fuss at them. But when we go home, it's kind of like they revisit that, go home as far as us not being home and them just having someone to fuss at or, you know, someone to... Their love language. <laughs> the I miss you. Yeah. They you with the I miss you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, sometimes, I know for myself, I sometimes um, have to realize when it's jam, you really messed up compared to where it's just like, oh, they and they feelings, so I'm gonna just let you have the moment. Yeah. I don't know, some, I'm, I'm trying to learn how to differentiate between the two, especially being the youngest in the household. I feel like I always gotta defend myself, like, nah, you ain't gonna treat me like this. Nah, I ain't no punk, like. <laughs> so, you know, I turn it to, you know what? <laughs> Stop defending. I see you, girl. You old. You know, I turn into a Tasmanian devil. So I think for myself, it's I don't even know how to react between if it's a oh I miss you or it's I feel like bothered or I just feel like being a jerk face right now. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I don't know how to. I don't know how to answer that. Cause as like at one token, like we go home and visit, but then at the same time, parents be like, oh, so when you going back? <laughs> It's like, didn't you want to come see you? You always talking about we not there. You you in North Carolina, I ain't seen you in seven months. But then when I'm home, you just like, like when you leaving again? Excuse me. I just got here two hours ago. Right. <laughs> so, I don't know. Like, I think I'm trying to understand how to be an adult child. Yeah. And I'm struggling. Child's overrated. <laughs> <laughs> you can be in your own house paying your own bills, doing your own lot of that thing, and you'll still be harassed. So that you're not taking certain things serious. And you'd be like, girl. What? Um, um, question. Why are dads more lax or have a tendency to be more lax in the parental part of things? All right, so here comes the wonderful conversation about black, black mother-daughter relationships. <laughs> um, dads are more relaxed because for the most part, they weren't over-parented. Because boys were allowed to roam free and be men and do men things or whatever. Girls, you can't be fast. You gotta have your legs closed. You can't do this, you can't do that. You gotta take care of this. Like, all these things like it's annoying mm-hmm. 
my dad is my homie. Like, we're like this. My dad has never, I can think on two occasions my dad has ever, like, popped me or something like that. Other than that, he talks to me. Mm. Sometimes dealing with your mother is like dealing with somebody off the street, like some female who tries you. It's like, it feels like there has to be some level of dominance. Like, and it's very hard, especially when you're the child who is the, doesn't do. Like, okay, so let's just be fair. When your first child does everything you say, mm-hmm. and so you expect the second, that's the daughter, you expect the second daughter to fall in line. The second, the second daughter is just like, all right, I get it, but I like over here too. Like, <laughs> so I believe fathers are, um, and they're also trying to prepare us. Maybe they want to be a little bit softer to their daughters because they know these men that they're about to send us out to ain't nothing no good. And they want us to trust something. Like, now, that's depending on if you have a relationship. Which we're, we're lucky to be, you know, uh, have girl dads. We're very lucky. Because when you still have to have the conversation of people who don't know their fathers and their late 20s, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I really believe that fathers are chill because they want to give us a chance. Like they're happy. Like they're like the video that I saw on Instagram that's taking me out. And y'all probably seen it too, where the dad, the son is recording the father dancing with her sister, the, his sister, and he was like, I don't know this man. Yes. I saw that. The Ari, Ariana Grande, he's over here laughing and getting in. It's like it changes you. He's like, I said it to my brothers. <laughs> yeah. So I really just think the dynamic of black mother-daughter relationships are hard to discuss because it's like for the most part we don't get to be friends to with our moms so we're like in our late 20s or 30s if we're lucky mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you know it's well my mother raised me this way and don't make it right you know they used to call you colored and tell you you couldn't sit places that was the norm but it didn't make it right like you have to be open to, to cultivate these relationships because they're really special and there's the magic there. And you know, I don't know. All I know is I can get away with stuff with Bruce and get away with my mom. And I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. And I think there, I mean, I know people got an issue with this show, Black AF. I like the show particularly myself. I thought it was good. But they touched yeah. base on the episode about that, about um, adultification, um, especially when it comes to young Black girls. Like, I think, unfortunately, what <laughs> the moms and with their daughters is that they understand, like, I get this is how you want to live your life, but this is how the world is going to see you. Um, versus, like, with dads, like, they just learned about their, they learned through experience because as a man, you kind of have the privilege to learn based through experience and not face any backlash from it. As a woman, you can't really learn from experience and then kind of have a um the same outcome as some of our male counterparts so i think also with dads that's probably why they're a little bit more lax with their daughters now with their sons it's probably a different story because you know moms are a little bit lax with their sons in comparison to dad so for us our dads were our go-tos like <laughs> when mom reprimanded us we go into dad like <laughs> so it's i think you also just have to look at like the burden i guess that parents have especially moms have with their daughters, especially now with everything that's going on. It's just like, you got to prepare your kids for, for anything at this point. Um, <laughs> now, because literally if you black, you, you target practice. Release the murder hornets. I realized something just now with the two of you guys response to that question I don't think it ever dawned on me before because we are also, we're all within the same age group that you two are younger siblings. Mm -hmm. And I'm an older sibling. Mm -hmm. I'm listening and I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't recall, I don't recall that relationship. (laughs) When I was younger, I can say that me and my dad had a pretty cool relationship, but it seems to have been as an older, the relationship has further and further separated. And I'm listening to you guys and I'm like, I, I guess it's because 
I was getting older as a female and I needed my mother, but at the same time, you still need the presence of your father. And it just, I just realized that that relationship, the relationship that your parents have with younger siblings is not the same relationship that they have with older siblings. I just realized that. <laughs> <laughs> don't get me wrong like people think baby oh, daddy's now it's just like man. i think i think sometimes y'all forget like the youngest ones granted our parents are older and they a little bit more tired when we come around but y'all don't understand everything that y'all told them no about or you wasn't doing baby it came on us wasn't no option okay no like nah like you're not doing that that's not happening but with so and so, they didn't. You gonna do it? Okay, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'm sorry. You sound a little upset there. I apologize. I was triggered just a little bit. Just a little. She was triggered. I was triggered. Uh, why do parents, especially mothers, love to say this? And Jamil, you might laugh. They love to say this. Motherhood is a thankless job. <laughs> Wait, I, I cannot stand when I hear that because they've sacrificed, they've been there for us, they've given us everything that they could have possibly given us, they showed us the way, they tried to mold us to be the individual Black women, independent Black women, that we could be the best person of us. But as soon as you go against the grain of their thought process, it, it then becomes, it's a thankless job. I'm convinced that when we do something that they don't um, like or something like that, they just get triggered. I think, I think they have PTSD from when they gave birth or something. Um, and maybe we may experience this when we become mothers, but I think what happens is, is that a PTSD experience kind of shifts in the atmosphere. <laughs> um, and they just think about the hours and days of labor that they were in and then blame us for it. As though we said to them, hey, please have us. Please bring me into the world. <laughs> Bring me into COVID-19 where I have to quarantine for three months by myself. Like, you know, so I don't know, bro. Maybe we'll piggyback when we give birth. Who knows? Mm -mm. I don't know when that's happening. But I think <laughs> I could just my mama never said that. But I do think she said it in ways like, you know, I've done this, I've done that. Like, you were a parent, you're supposed to. Like, what do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. Nobody told you to go uh, canoodle with Joe. <laughs> canoodle it. Nobody told you to canoodle in early 85 with Joe. You could have been, you could have been whatever. Not 85. <laughs> you wanted to put on a Luther Vandross where I can lose your mind. That ain't got nothing to do with me. Luther? <laughs> and I just, I hate they say motherhood's a thankless job. I I hope to experience it one day. You know, I would love a little mini me. Ooh, I would love a little mini me. Bless her, Lord. <laughs> Bless her. Or, you know, just, I, I do, but part of me is kind of glad I'm not a parent at the same time. Because right now, like, I could imagine, like, me, you know, I got to stop smoking. Yeah. Because I'm messing around and forget the baby got to eat. Or the baby gonna eat what I gotta eat. Well, they ask for your food. But like, listen, here, I got this Chick-fil-A <laughs> fry. Can you gum it? Like, mommy high right now. I, I can't mother you at the moment. Give me about another two hours in a nap. <laughs> That's what they daddy for. Go on to your daddy. What? Yeah. The worst. Yeah. Again, go on to your daddy. He he's he's in better mind space than me at this current juncture. Come get your child. <laughs> Please. No one cleaves so be high with me. I'm I just I can't with it too. I'm gonna be single. I mean it's hurtful to hear though, like when parents say that being a parent is a is a thankless job because I feel like 
it's not a job where you should feel like you should be thanked. Mm. Ouch. And the, please don't take it the hard, a harsh way, but I feel like you wanted kids. So you assume the responsibility of what that means to have a child. And if you want the next generation to be better than the last, why do I have to thank you for investing in me as your child? Like that's your job. I'm going to thank you because I'm appreciative. You didn't have to do it, but you did, but it shouldn't be required. I think that's what I mean. It's just, it's not a requirement. Mm-hmm. I will honor you as my mother and my father because I give you that respect because of the things that you provided with me, provided me with, the opportunities you've given me, the things that you've instilled in me and the person that I am. I credit all of that to both of my parents. However, comma, I'm not going to spend the rest of my life giving you gratitude and thanks because once I become somebody's wife, they become my priority, not you. And I can't keep thanking you and neglecting my own family in the near future. Mm. Like, that's not fair. That's not fair to require your kids to do that. It hit my heart a different way. I'm sorry. It did. Because I feel what you're saying. But I do feel that we don't have to say thank you. But we, I, I think you said it. We don't have to say thank you, but we can Mm -hmm. I'm always going to give thanks and show my thanks to my parents like I'd be an a-hole if I didn't like I can't I cannot I cannot not credit any of my success to and say I did it on my own without my parents like that's nutty (laughs) like that's nutty um (laughs) but I just feel like sometimes parents kind of forget that we're also human Mm -hmm. and it's just like (laughs) Sometimes when I get mad at you, that's not negating everything that I'm thankful for that you've done for me. It's just right now in this moment, you're really getting on my nerves. <laughs> just, yeah, yeah. just get on my nerves a little bit. And it's just like, can I have my space for a second? You know how you tell me, give you your space? I need my space. I need my space. You know, you know how when your parents are going through things and they think that you don't see what they're going through. And then when you bring it up to them about what they're going through, and then they say they're not going through anything, how does that make you feel as a child for your parents to not uh, to not want to be able, or maybe they're not able to express those personal details with you? Um. I think it depends on what it is that you want to know. I do feel like there are certain aspects of my parents' life, like I really don't need to know that Mm -hmm. Um, because I'm always going to look at you as my mom. I'm always going to look at you as my father. So certain information I just don't need to know. Um, But at the same time, if the same way I ask or require my parents to give me the space and when I'm ready to talk to you about how I feel, I got to give you that same respect. So if you tell me, even if it is um, a part of your development process, um, yeah, absolutely. I don't, I don't feel like you should. You can't push, push people into things that they are not ready to fully accept and receive. Mm-hmm. You can't. And I, I look at that in my own personal journey because I myself um, decided to start therapy. Is this the first time I ever started therapy in my life? No, this is actually the third time <laughs> I've tried to start. Like, and I remember writing in my journal, this is my third first day of therapy. <laughs> and it's just like the other two times that I tried it, I wasn't really in the space to receive what therapy could do for me. Mm. And I feel like also with parents, if they are not in a, sp- a space to be vulnerable, to show you that side or feel vulnerable enough or safe enough to confide in you about certain things as an adult child, then you're just going to have to wait. And and it sucks, but certain things you can't push, even if it's for your development, because at the same time, like your parent is going to be impacted by it too. But then they explode and then you reap the consequences of the explosion. Then it's, what are you supposed to do with that? I explode. You exploded. I still love you. 
you just exploded. <laughs> you know me, I'm a I'm a volcano. I done exploded a couple of times, okay? I mean, volcano is an understatement. You more like a tsunami for real? Okay. I am an air sign, so you know. I don't judge. I love you all the same. <laughs> I'll be terrified when, when the tsunami comes because you just got to let it hit. Uh -huh. I got melanin. Oh, yeah. You got to see this melanin, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Told you, I'm the David Ruffin between the both of us. I'm David Ruffin. You and the girls are a hoot. <laughs> I'm more like Otis. Blue? Maybe Otis. You better not be blue because blue is stupid. And I'm gonna keep I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna tell you why he was dumb. <laughs> if he ain't trying to show out in that wheelchair and go the long way to get them daggone biscuits. Hello, come on. <laughs> but you wanna go show out in your wheelchair. That's what I'm still got You wanna do too much. I ain't even need them goddamn biscuits, Blue. Mama biscuits, okay? One of his mama biscuits. One of his mama biscuits. The fact that she, listen, she didn't play everybody mama. She's been everybody mama. Ain't she everybody mama? Oh, how many kids do you have? Lord. Oh, I'm sorry. I was corrected. It was short ribs, not biscuits, because he's in the conversation. Listen here. Short ribs, biscuits. He should have just went to the left instead Thank of... Thank you. Okay. He, he hopped over in the wheelchair and everybody took him, oh my God, he did. Yeah, funny. I like to think of myself like Quiet Boy. Y'all remember Quiet Boy from the Five Heartbeats? <laughs> he was eclectic. He was he was a creative being. He got a little he was a, he was a liar. He got a he got a little taste of freedom. And but he, he lied. No, he came back. No. His behind told that girl. I'm the lead singer of the Five Harpies. No, you ain't. <laughs> and they call, they call me Rock. Oh, well, that's news to us, <laughs> the viewing audience, because you're a choir boy. Can't serve two masters. <laughs> <laughs> he left that Bible. It was over, child. There wasn't no coming back. Nope. <laughs> what happened? His mama gave him the Bible, and he just got. And I uh, want a number one hit. <laughs> okay, what's your next question? Because you know this can go somewhere. Oh no, what's the question? You the one with all the questions? I thought you was about to ask the question. <laughs> no, I ain't got no questions. You the one that got you the, you the uh, mediator, the moderator. You the host. How the guests got questions? Right. <laughs> ask questions? How? What kind of parents do y'all want to be? Y'all want to take some of the values that your parents gave you and instill them in your children? Do you think that beatings are an effective form of discipline? Time out is an effective form of discipline? What kind of parents do you want to be? She said I could smoke. <laughs> All right, so he was like on camera. I'm like, yeah. Um, I'm going to be on here. Huh? There's a no judgment zone here. Okay, great. No judgment. So well, I'm glad because we were to lay out the coke. Woo. Anyway, I'm, I'm y'all know I don't do coke. <laughs> Who could afford that in COVID? <laughs> I make too. I don't make enough money for that. Rich people struggle, child. Not my tax budget. As I was saying, <laughs> I'm going to be. I want. I'm going to talk to my children. But I do think we are better for having getting our asses beat because these new children, these timeout children, these children that ain't fearful of their parents, like oh oh the folk I go the, the people I work with these these two that the ones I call the um the two thousand babies the cash money babies because they were there they weren't there when they were taking over yeah they need to be beat yes they do. And when I say beat, I mean old school, get you when you get out this tub, beat with a belt. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, they do. It's triggering. Um, I'm sorry. Low key, not low key, but I've gotten one of those one time in my life. <laughs> got out the shower, wrapped up in the <laughs> towel, bruh. Wrapped up in the towel. You would have thought this woman was, 
I was like, what the hell is going on here? Yeah, you turned daddy. Listen. <coughs> Sorry, I just a moment. I got one of those. <laughs> but no, all jokes aside, um, I think I'm gonna be a mixture of both. But I'm gonna to talk and I'm gonna make sure that I do what my daddy did to me. My daddy, I my story's a little different, you know, because I, I know I'm probably gonna have a chubs and dubs baby and prepare for that. But I never lack confidence and my daddy always told me I was pretty like I was Lady Day I had all these nicknames and if I knew nobody else in the world thought I was gorgeous with my daddy I want to make sure that my child is prepared and know that you are love this world is cold when you leave outside these four walls but know always in this house you're loved and you're valuable and you know I don't want to do corporal punishment but if I gotta get in that ass <laughs> Not with the lean in on the camera. <laughs> if I got no, nah, because I get it now. I told my mom, I was like, you know what? I know why you beat me sometimes. Cause I got, I, you got sick of it, didn't you? You yeah. got to repeat yourself. You got you there. I understand. I got to learn. I got to learn. Like, <laughs> woo! I want to like these little kids I work with. Yeah. Be happy that you don't work with the age of thirteen to eighteen years old. Okay. Cause they ain't even my kids, and I be wanting to get on a table. Oh, yeah. but I do. I work with the early college students, and I work with eight in them freshmen. And <clears throat> who you talking to, little girl? Like you got me chopped. I have to go toe to toe with some of them six four ones, but listen here, you got me chopped. Like I'm still young enough to dig in your ass. Like don't, little girl. You want to meet me off campus? But I snatched that lace front off your head and beat your ass. And tell your mama, I beat your ass. I am a millennial. I am right behind you. Okay. In front, girl. You right in front. No. Well, oh, yeah, because you get what I'm saying. I'm looking at the chart. I'm sorry. Let her have a moment. Let her have a moment. I'm a later millennial. You know, it's taking me a little longer to process. What, what, what about you, sis? What, what, what do you envision your form of motherhood to be? You want the whole story, or like you just want like the emotional part, or you want it all? Girl, First of all, don't you see me? Never do see me again? <laughs> on mothers, on mothers. Okay, let me stop playing for the DMV folk. Um, well, one, I want a lot of kids. You? Yes, girl. I can't. Whoever the Lord sent me, I can't wait for them to shoot my club up. I want a lot of kids. I, <laughs> I want a minimum of three. That is not a lot. I said a minimum of three. Minimum. Like if I can't, if health reasons come into play, I can't have no more. Oh, the minimum was five, but you know. <sighs> Anywho, I want a lot of kids, um, but I want my kids to feel comfortable to talk to me about whatever issues they have, but I think I, I have to be receptive to it. So I think that's the play that my partner will have to come in is, and check me, like, <clears throat> you acting like so-and-so. You acting like so-and-so. Listen to what they saying. So I think as a parent, I want to listen to my child. I want to communicate <laughs> with them. Um, I want them to feel like they can talk to me about anything. Like, I'm not going to judge you. <laughs> I never want my child to feel like I'm going to judge them for the decisions that they make because their mom used to be out here too, living her life. Um, and I can't judge you for living yours. Well, I, guess I don't have to agree with it, but I don't have to judge you for it either. So I think that's probably going to be a, um, the hard part for me is bending as a parent because, you know, I got that stubbornness in me, so... You got it bad from both your parents. I know, and that's and that's why I need a partner who is a little bit more flexible. Is like, all right, like, chill out. You know, mm -hmm. I feel bad because I <laughs> can feel me going like the second my baby come home and tell me they done said something about my child. Okay, my child. Not my child. <laughs> Yeah, do about my child. I'm gonna have to roll up to the school. Like, listen, I'm just gonna be. I'm gonna keep the buck with you. What's up, with your mother? With your mother? Because if I can't get her, because I I'll trip a kid. I've done it. I'll give the middle finger to kids. Like, I think Cletus is with me. 
I get defended to some little. I was just like, what the "Fuck, little bit, little little bitches, don't don't do me. I don't care. I listen. I'm working on this personality because like, I guess it's not. No, I'm I'm being honest. Like one thing I can say about my mother: don't play with Terry or none of her children. Right? Because mommy done pulled up on a few people. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like time in seventh grade when I made my white math teacher cry. And she, oh, what did I do? And my mom was like, yeah, yeah, that's all well and dandy. What did you say to my child? Okay. Mm-hmm. My mom. And she's like, no, no, your ass is going to get handled when I get home. But right now, I got a stack for this. Mm-hmm. I can just see myself as that parent. Like, I already know in my relationship, it mirrors my mom and dad's a lot, which is really interesting. Mm-hmm. So the one that y'all going to have to be worried about ain't me. It's that Negro. Mm-hmm. You don't have to worry about that man. Somebody, especially if he has a girl. Yes, black fatherhood. Listen, I'm scared. Okay. I have that little girl already and she's still swimming in my uterus. I'm scared. <laughs> because her daddy ah, crazy. <laughs> he, he's crazy. I can see him and he country too. And his response. Warm bread fan. Listen, tickets, <laughs> niggas. His response. Is always the same. A hog will eat anything. And when you sit down and let that play and seep into your soul, you look at a nigga different. You just look at it like, so you crazy. So you crazy for real. Crazy, crazy. Cause the got you crazy. Dee dee. That's him. That's him right there. That's the next level. Cause a pig will eat anything. I feel like for me, um, our mother has a tendency to do this Claire Huxtable thing. And I feel like once I start having children, I want to perfect the art of Claire Huxtable. What's that line she always said? Let the record show. Yes, let the record show. Because she was a dad on lawyer. <laughs> Listen, when Claire Huxtable reads you with let the record show, you will know you're getting cut for filth. But, um, I do feel like there needs to be some form of physical discipline when it comes to raising your children. Um, as far as the extent of it, I guess it would just determine will be determined on my parenting style. I don't know about talking because it's just like you can talk until you're blue in the face, but if they don't, if they are, if they're not listening, then it's like, what do you do now? You know, how much talking do you do until your child gets what you're trying to say? I but you, I, gotta hold them accountable. you said what? You gotta hold them accountable. Like, as parents, we always try to jump in and say, well, not as parents, because we ain't parents. But <laughs> from what I've seen with our parents, speaking for myself, when I've messed up as a child, you know, they throw on their cape and I yeah. want to save it and fix the problem. No, you need to let your child experience that if you don't do this, this is the outcome. Right. I, yeah, that makes sense. Because I feel like I would be the parent, but like, you know, I'll fix it. But at the same time, I can fix it, but beat your ass when you get home. I just, that's just how I feel. Or, or that. I fix it, but I'm, I told you not to do this. I'm going to beat your ass when you get ooh, home. Ooh, that used to be, ooh, that wait till they come home, Jesus. I'm not going to slap you in front of your sixth grade class as everybody's walking into the classroom. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to get home. No, Terry came Terry came to school and dropped me off in her house coat, and that was enough. Oh, no, listen. No, early, I early 90s, mid-90s, Terry, see, you're not familiar with that person. Your aunt is the real savage, okay? Listen, she done pulled up on me and my friends. Um, oh, I got pulled up on. Terry didn't care. Terry would tell you to get in the car. Sneaky enough, maybe. Oh, so you gonna tell your stories? I I never <laughs> snuck. Let me, let me make something very clear. I never snuck around. I always asked permission and happened to be granted. Okay. Listen, I pulled off one heist. My <laughs> I had, and in my mind, now looking back on it, it's dumb as hell. But in, at the time. So I got up, cause my I, I got up before my parents. So my I got up, got dressed, mm-hmm. went out the front door, 
but came back in through the sliding door by the deck, went back up to my room and laid in my bed. Because why would they come in my room, right? Because I'm going. I pulled it off. My girls pulled up. And we went to Philly for the day. You couldn't tell me nothing. I was living life. I was like, hey, BDC in the place with young free. <laughs> <laughs> Came back home. Knew they were going to call because of caller ID. Okay. Then we said, that caller ID was a bitch. And I just remember I was so satisfied with myself. Like if I was in the black sitcom, if I was Moesha, I don't know my. Today, I pulled off the scam of the century. We went to get cheesesteaks. I was on South Street. I went to Condom Kingdom for the first time because that was a goal. <laughs> I told my mom that story and she said, so let me get this straight. You got up, got dressed, and came back in the house. She was like, why didn't you just open the door and go back upstairs? I was like... <laughs> Bitch, you smarter than motherfucker today. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there's two stories I'm about to tell you. The sixth grade story. Mr. Robinson. Hey, Mr. Robinson. Oh, I know this story. My man, right? He was my homeroom teacher and he was my drama teacher in junior high school. Junior high school 113. He called the house, left a message. Or did I maybe call mommy's job? I can't remember. But he called. And somehow she got the message. So got home. She came home. She's like, yeah, I got a, I got a call. Is there anything that you want to tell me? I was like, no. What, what, what are you talking about? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Pause, kids. And this is where she messed up. <laughs> okay. She had the opportunity to tell the truth. <laughs> In my defense, I, to this day, still don't even know why he called. But he called, and I'm a, I feel like he said I was doing something, or I was cutting up, I was acting up. I don't remember what happened. But mommy asked me Friday, Saturday, Sunday, a multiple times. Monday morning came. She said, oh, is there something you got to tell me before I go up to that school? I go to school. I was like going into first period. She comes, Jeffrey comes. I'm like, damn. Not Jeffrey. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, damn. So the way the hallway was, I still remember this classroom. It was on the corner. The stairwell was right there. Everybody comes through that stairwell to go down the hallway to go to class. I get called out of the classroom. We're talking in the hallway. And she said, I'm going to ask you one more time. <laughs> Is there anything you got to tell me? I was like, nah, I don't. Before I could get it out, her hand was across my face. And everybody was in the hallway. Okay? That day I knew my mother was crazy. That's how long it took you to find out that Connie was crazy? That day I knew. <clears throat> the day I knew she was really crazy, I was in high school. I think I was in ninth grade, maybe 10th grade. And mommy is this tall woman. And she was saying something to me and I jumped stupid at her. As I was looking down on her. I was like, you not going was going at it. She yoked me up so hard and lifted me up on the wall. She said, if you ever jump in my face like that again, I will kill you. She was. Ask me if I did it again. You did? I didn't. Okay. I did not that day. I was scared. Like, she literally lifted me up by my neck up the wall. I was saying in English or Spanish. Oh, no. She was just straight New York cussing me out. Okay. Straight New York cussing me out. I was like, yeah, you right. You crazy. I'm sorry. Side note. Random. But a question I've always asked her. Do you guys identify as Afro-Latina? All day. Listen, I checked the other box. I don't give a damn. <laughs> Black, white, other, Hispanic. I'm checking all the boxes. <laughs> I, um, I checked the box and I put other, and I definitely said a resident of Stake on yet. I definitely put it on. I think I was high. <laughs> a resident of Stake <laughs> Like, I'm trying to tell you, I really need a camera crew because my life is that funny. Like, even the stuff that goes on in here, again, a random story. I was high. High as like 
giraffe ass this one time. And I go into bed and I start doing this with the covers, right? Mm -hmm. Going blah, 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 blah. Cletus comes in. I said, Cletus, save me. I'm drowning. Blah, 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 blah. He said, girl. I was like, what? I said, swim to me. He said, I'm going to get in this bed and you're going to go to sleep. I was like, okay. Okay. (laughs) Blah, blah, blah. blah. Listen, I was committed to this character. Swim to me. You know, I just want to close the door and walk out. You know what? I don't need your judgment. I need your love. Okay. <laughs> I see you now. I'm just going to go like this. Whatever. It's a new thing because you always bother me anyway. Swim to me. I still got pictures. Y'all gonna leave me alone that I haven't released to these streets, but they can be released. I got one of that one crying because that's what she does best. Hey. Okay. I'm not scared. I don't appreciate it. Is that I can't ever recall one of my parents going up to Jamila school and knocking her ass out. Ooh. That's because I played my stuff smart. See, Ooh. I watched the mistakes of my older sister and cousin. I said, oh, see, I'm not doing that. I ain't getting caught. You ain't never heard of none of my antics. And also, I didn't really, like, again, the younger sibling syndrome. Whatever the oldest did not do, I was always in activity that sister said no to. You was. I was in it. So I didn't really have time to sneak. I mean, sister also laughs at me because I asked for permission to participate in Sierra Skip Day. Bruh. <laughs> the whole point of Senior Skip Day is to not go to school. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, we're not. Who's, who's Senior Skip Day was on? Mine or your yours, sister? You, y'all just went to the movies. Ooh, I was in Ocean City with a car, money, and a full tank of gas with my three other friends. Why? Because we asked permission. And our parents said, go ahead. They gave us the car. They gave us a full tank of gas. They gave us some money. And we wasn't... To be honest, no, you didn't have us in your skip day. Yes, I did. I skipped school. No. I skipped school. Hold up. Hold up. I got network too now, okay? First of all. I skipped school and I got bad luck. And yeah. That's not a skip day. What you got was permission to leave. You ain't have to. Had to you ain't have to. School. Who gonna protect me if I got caught? Hmm? Nah, okay, you know. right. That's why you want Jamila. You know what? You've been like this. You mentioned. Let me tell you something. The whole purpose of seeing a skip day is they have that rush that you got away with something. I did get away with it. I you right. no, you didn't get away with anything because you didn't do anything. Ask permission. You ask permission. I don't care. I still didn't have to go to school. Y'all were at the movies in town. No, Who told cool. you that? We didn't go to the movies. You <laughs> told me that. <laughs> I was at I was in DC on my senior skip day. Thing. Hey, I was at I was at Ocean City. A whole house party in the middle of the day. I no, don't you ain't tell me that you said that y'all went to the movies. Oh, I lied. And now you having house parties. You ain't Moesha. Who was there? Hakeem Nikki. Yeah. Yeah. Haji. Party. Haji. <laughs> And my cue was there. Lord. Oh, Lord. We had a, we did, so, I'm sorry. Your yeah. cue. Oh, Jesus. My cue was there. And now you got the Aki ball. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got me something Southern Fried. Southern Fried. Southern Fried. Yes, Housewives. Yes. I missed that. What you say? Don't say that. <laughs> what she say? <laughs> I'm out here. I'm out here in the streets. You oh, for the streets? Listen, no, I'm not for the streets. <laughs> I am not for the streets. I have an AP, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> we well, together and... This is so inappropriate. Although, I just don't understand... How at this level, people are still sleeping with him without protection. Like you just don't care about your life, sis. You really think you're a secure bag? Because now he's dragging that last one, then called sis ugly. I'm just like, I don't think he was talking about her physically. I think he was talking about her inner. Are you part of the future hive? Because it was still this conversation. Though. Um, I'm not a part of the future hive. However, comma, ain't no however, comma. Um, there there are things that he says that. If I had a son, I would tell my son the same thing. Like, 
Like what? No. Like I think I don't know his li- like his lyrics quote for quote. Um, but I don't think he was trying to say like she was ugly. Maybe he was talking about her spirit. Like no, he knows exactly. No, the Davies, the Davies. First of all, ain't no dude named the Davies running up in me. The okay, and it ain't even spelled the Davies. Okay, y'all not saying nothing about the Who? The Wayne. The Wayne Wade. Okay, <laughs> that man's name ain't even spelled the Wayne. It's the Wayne. Okay, deflecting right now. Okay, no, I'm not deflecting. The Wayne had a baby. It's definitely a deflecting. They were deflecting. But y'all buy that future because he out here telling them like, no, I'm not gonna lock you down. Like I'm out here doing me. Let me tell you something. I take like one of song by future, and and one song only, and not getting the AP. Like get get over it. <laughs> There's only one song by future I enjoy, and it's Diamonds Dancing. Because if I, it's just it just gives me what I need. Y'all can't be mad at a man who you got women out here saying. Oh, wine and dine me if you want the ooh wee, and then he wine and dine you. He expected some ooh wee, cause that's what you said. I mean, how you mad at him for being honest, saying I'm never gonna wife you? You're to the streets unless you got an AP. I mean, but if that's how he feels, then he should stop birthing all these children, or they should stop busting it wide open for him. Wow. Wow. I never thought it'd be my own flesh and blood. <laughs> I'm telling you. I never thought. I'm saying. All I'm saying is, if you support Meg, you, you can't be mad at Future. Because Meg, she be out here, and I be quoting Meg too. You feel me? Walking all over these niggas and he buy me on my shoes. You feel me? I don't, I couldn't tell you a Megan Thee Stallion song. Oh, so, I mean, if you quote and Meg saying we walking all over these dudes and they buying us our shoes and quit calling him a trick if he only buy your food, you can't be mad at Future. You can't. First of all, she's not going to sit here with these glasses on and make me feel like I've been just sexual. <laughs> <laughs> I feel very attacked. I will always light down a little bit. No, nah, I mean, I, I like- will support St. Meg. But Nevadius, uh, non non radius, whatever his name I'm is, supporting Bishop Nevadius. I will not allow him <laughs> to continue to trollop through, like. I'm oh, sorry. I, I hope Lori Harvey takes his heart. Why? Why do you want? It does a crossover with it. I why don't want it. that. Yeah. Why? He needs to feel it. Why? Lori it. playing her part. That's why he's still rocking with her because she playing her part. You feel me? But she was for the street. The problem now, all this playing the part bullshit. Listen, if you want to be fucking around, then be fucking around. Stop trying to have the girlfriend while you fucking around and doing all this foolishness and playing parts and open relationships and stuff. Then people get pregnant and they get mad. But then also at the same time, you can't be setting rules. Like, people always say, like, oh, we not together, but, like, you can't be sleeping around with um, the rest of the girls. Why? If I'm not with you, I can do what I want. Like, so you either going to rock with it or you not. Like, and I think that's the issue. Like, people start putting labels and rules on stuff, and that's where it gets. I can't say I've been with the same man for four years. See? Right. Like, but what's the point of doing all of that stuff? I don't know. I don't know. It's I'm out here living a single life with no rules and no commitment. You know, oh, Bishop Don Juan Jam, I get it. We get it. You out here pimping, pimping. I no, not pimping. I'm just protecting my peace. Look, I'm I'm my As an old school player, I might have been, I might have retired, but I can still coach. Okay, <laughs> I'm protecting my peace. Sidelines. You know, I can still coach. Yeah, I need some new plays, coach. I need some Listen, new. what you got to do? Now, you know how I used to catch my fish back in the day? I used to do it back. I'd be in the club, right? Oh, you was at, you was at Ramba 54. You better know it. <laughs> Come on. <Smaller> <laughs> annoying. <laughs> you was at the airhouse like, ah. <laughs> <At the house. laughs> so, I see what my prey was drinking, right? <laughs> and I send him a drink. Man, that's the smoothest shit you could ever do as a female to a dude. He won't ready. He bought my drinks for the rest of the night. It always works, too. And I'm like, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, interrupt your evening or nothing. I just saw something I liked, and I just wanted to celebrate it. Girl! <laughs> Old school smooth, though. You know. You know this? Do you see the show? 
what's up? What you want to do? That's that old school smooth. Yeah. And then, you know, oh, that's cute. Well, listen, I'm about to head back to campus. Here's my information. Oh, back. I'm like, you know, if you really want to get in contact with me, you can find me at AudioNet. Like, girl, hey. <laughs> it's time that a nigga named Cletus. Now she all wiped up and stuff. Making breakfast. Because you got the AP. Learning how to, to make <laughs> You got the AP. <laughs> I'm just gonna randomly text y'all that one day. <laughs> I still got the AP, y'all. Don't, don't text me that. <laughs> don't, don't if I gotta sit through videos of Juan and Maria, y'all can sit through AP. That's the perfect example right there. Why go through all of that? Somebody got to go. Juan or Maria? But usually, like he be coming back. I ain't hear him come back this morning. He's sick of it. <laughs> But she, I don't be liking her because she said something inappropriate to him one time last year when they was arguing, and I did not like that. She deserved to get punched in the face for that. Let me tell you, wait, the one thing I did, we had neighbors that used to live next door, no, under us, and, you know, they were clear. And she, <laughs> and she was like, can you just fucking hold me? And she's like, she was like, he told her, he's like, you have issues. I didn't sign up for this. She's like, fine, go to your grandma's with your perfect picture fucking family and have your cranberry sauce. So I'm in the bathroom, you know. <laughs> and then Cletus come in. He's like, what you do? I said, shh, trying to get the tea. He said, oh, there you go. Then hold on, he, he heard it right. He was like, ooh. And see, Cletus has this thing that he does with me and nobody else. He's like, he was like, but bitch. I was like, but girl. <laughs> Ooh, I love couples when they move in because I live with clear people. And clearly, clear people's arguments go way different than ours. This you true. jerk. Banging on that door. I was like, dang, what's going on over here? I just wonder if they hear us when we get nasty. I be feeling so bad. Wow, we all grown. I know we grown, but I, I'm 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 explicit. They know this nigga name. Oh, you're the cleanest, huh? <laughs> Since we have completely gotten off topic. Yeah, we definitely did. I think, but you, I would ladies. like to thank you, ladies, for joining me. <laughs> <laughs>